Hey everybody, it's Jason Bloy here, and today I want to chat with you guys about something that comes up occasionally when I get in discussions and conversations with different trainers and coaches and people, and that's this idea that a lot of people have that doing one rep maxes or training max effort work is somehow extremely dangerous or that has a high injury risk um, and everything else, and, and the truth is that doesn't actually seem to be the case, and it's been noted in exercise science research for many, many years that actually testing people's one rep maxes on a variety of exercises, even periodically through testing, is a normal part of actual peer-reviewed exercise science studies. So well, you need to remember when you're talking about this stuff, if something is routinely done and gets to an ethics board for studies in a field, it's probably not as dangerous as people might think that it is, right? Because it's getting through the, the ethics boards. And it's done routinely, and it's actually considered to be a reasonably safe, when under supervision, a form of actually testing changes in strength. In fact, if you're not testing one rep maxes, you don't even always have a good indicator of how much maximum strength has changed on a, on a given exercise or even in a given muscle group sometimes. Um, it's actually necessary to, to really get a truly accurate measure of changes in strength. And, you know, a lot of people get this idea, they're like, well, because if you're using really heavy weights, that it must be, be really dangerous. But the truth is, it's not even lifting heavy weights, per se, that even leads to most injuries, right? What, what actually leads to most injuries when training? When drugs are not part of the equation, right? If drugs are completely out of the mix, there are no drugs involved. And that's not just PEDs. I mean, prednisone could, in theory, lead to injuries, right? What usually causes it? Overuse injuries? Uh, excessive fatigue? Muscle imbalances? You know, a lot of people say things like, well, what about bad form? Mm, probably not as much as you would think. There are plenty of people who have horrifically bad form on a lot of exercises, depending upon what the actual type of bad form is, who never get hurt, who never seem to get hurt, and you're, you can be amazed be absolutely amazed that they manage to lift as much weight as they do with the horrific form they do and never seem to get injured. So, so bad form obviously can't be the only factor. And I'm not saying we don't need to pay attention to form. But generally speaking, if you are not excessively fatigued, you're not in an overreach state, you don't have a lot of connective tissue problems, there's, there's nothing inherently dangerous about someone who's already trained doing maxis. There's nothing inherently dangerous about it. And if we know that fatigue and overuse contribute to injuries the most, well, stop and think about that for a moment. Is one rep max is really what's hurting people? Is max effort training really what's hurting people? Or is it their volume work? More frequently than not, people's volume work itself can contribute to the injuries. Uh, getting tendonitis or connective tissue inflammation continuing to push through. Right? That's what predisposes you to injuries many times. And I'm not saying that bad form can't contribute, but a lot of bad form can be avoided. Meaning, it's got to be really bad form. It's not just bad form because you're lifting heavy. It's trying to get yourself psyched up as an inexperienced lifter and then using bad form because you're psyched up. That's horrifically bad. What do I mean by that? All right, how about having arm bend on a deadlift, right? Not locking your elbows before you pull a barbell off the floor on a max deadlift. Now that can do it, but is it always the max deadlift that tears it or can that happen when people are using 100 pounds less than their max? It happens with 100 pounds less than your max. It happens on people's rep work. Why? Pulling with arm bend. Right? Pulling with arm bend. But that has nothing to do with doing the max. In fact, again, we come back to the point, doing five rep sets have just as high of a chance of ripping a bicep if you have bending your arm on the deadlift. That's because you don't know how to perform the exercise. It might be also because of a muscle imbalance. Maybe you have weak bicep tendons because you haven't done much back work or any bicep work and you're deadlifting and again using a mixed grip. Okay, fine. But that's other factors that have predisposed you to it, not the actual heavy lift. That's not the cause. Okay, people say, well, the bench press, I've hurt myself. Well, how do you bench press? 
most of the injuries people get on a max bench have to do with what? If Again, if no drugs are in the mix and they haven't created a muscle imbalance by maybe doing too many partials or things like that, most people get hurt on the bench press by benching too high on their chest, excessive flare at the bottom, doing a guillotine press, right? Bench into your upper chest. Well, that's not a correct bench press. In fact, if the barbell touches your upper chest and you're on a flat bench, that's not even a bench press. That's a completely different exercise, isn't it? That's called a guillotine press. A bench press, the barbell, the correct technique on a bench press is to touch it at the nipple or a little further down your chest, in which case you don't even get a lot of the shoulder wrists that people are talking about. Now, are you just magically going to touch your upper chest because you went for a max? Well, I would hope not. What about muscle imbalances? Well, muscle imbalances, maybe if you have a really weak core, practicing on some squats and deadlifts could be dangerous. But if you have decent mobility built up and you have a strong core and you have things like strong shoulder girdle because maybe you've done rotator cuff exercises and some rear delt exercises, there is literally nothing high risk about hitting maxes on your big exercises as long as you make a conscious effort to use good form and it's a valuable part of training and i'm not saying that i would write a program for a rank novice that includes max effort work because i wouldn't right i wouldn't because they aren't always going to have decent form they're not always going to execute the list correctly right that's a big part of it. They have a lot to learn. But are you telling me it wouldn't benefit them? Do training maxes absolutely have a training effect? Titrating up to a max absolutely has a training effect. It absolutely has benefits, and it's absolutely essential for developing maximum strength. Now, if I had someone come to me who is a relatively novice lifter, maybe I wouldn't do this in their first month, but if I had a, a somewhat novice lifter come to me and say that they wanted to get into powerlifting and I was coaching them for money, would I have them do max work for one-on-one -on -one coaching? You bet I would. So, my God, why? You would let a novice do that? Yeah, under supervision. Because what is your real concern with novice lifters doing max effort work? They're not going to do it correctly. They're not going to be in the right mindset. They're going to use horrific form. They're not going to know the exercises. All right, it's not going to be valuable to them because of all those factors. And it might be somewhat risky. But under actual supervision... It's not even risky for them. If you have them and you've made sure that for the last couple of weeks they've done extra ab work and lower back work and they've done their face pulls, are we truly scared of them hitting a max under supervision? No. Now, does that mean you let them go for an all-out competition max? No. You come up here and you supervise it. You walk them through mental cues. You tell them as they're going to pull the bar, pull the slack out of the bar. Put your hips in this position. You walk them through it. You remind them squeeze the bar let the bar settle take a deep breath on the way down on the bench press push the bar away from you right you walk them through all the mental cues and if you're doing that even with a novice lifter in person does that really carry a high degree of risk no it doesn't it absolutely does not carry a degree of risk the only degree of risk even for the novice lifter doing maxes is inexperience not knowing how to perform them correctly which can be completely removed under the supervision of a coach and them not knowing how to program them as part of a larger program coming in and hitting random when they're at maxes right just doing them randomly on a whim uh, that's probably not ideal but actually doing them as part of a training program and part of testing and for the psychological benefit if supervised correctly that's perfectly acceptable, even for the novice. Even for the novice. It's not the heavy weights we're lifting on a max that's a concern. It really isn't. Because if we're capable of lifting them, if we're capable of lifting any weight with remotely decent form, unless there are other extraneous factors involved, it's not even actually particularly risky. You are more likely to get hurt driving on your way to the gym in your car than you are doing a decently correctly executed wonder up max if you do not have additional extraneous factors that are contributing to injury risks, such as the abuse of the wrong sort of drugs, 
really, really bad muscle imbalances or baby form that's so horrific that you can't avoid injury. But even then, you can avoid it. We see people all the time who have some of the worst god-awful form known to man who should technically get hurt doing 500, 550 pounds on a deadlift, but they don't actually seem to get hurt. No, they're out there. It's normally fatigue. It's usually fatigue and overuse injuries that cause you to get hurt when lifting heavy weights, not the actual lifting the heavy weight. All right, guys, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.